Hello everyone, this is uh, Dan from the Rock team. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Roost service account user and creating the Roost group that will be used to assign GDAP roles to within the CSP delegated admin relationship. Along with that, we'll be going through and creating the initial admin relationship for the customer to the MSP, and then we'll be assigning those roles to the group. So to start, we're going to go through and we're going to create the user account within Azure AD. So once you're within Azure AD or Entra, as it's now known, you'll go in, you'll create a new user. Typically, we'll want to set this to Roost. Uh, or at least that's what we're going to use in this example. And then we're just going to let it derive from the user principal name. And then we're going to give it a display name that clearly indicates what it's for. So we're just going to call it Roost Service Account. And then we are going to keep the randomly generated password. Now, you will want to document this user within your documentation platform as well as the user principal name. We'll just give it here. All right, so now that I have that documented in my password manager, I'll go ahead and create the account. We're just going to go to properties. We can leave these all as the defaults and then assignment. We're going to want to add it to the admin agents group, which should be the first group in the list. If it's not, just search up here. We'll go ahead and add that and then we'll want to add the global administrator role. This role is only necessary if you haven't installed the enterprise apps through the integration yet. Once we have those created, we'll go ahead and hit review and create, and then we'll just hit create. So then our user should now successfully be created. So then what we're going to do after that is we're going to create a new group. This group should be a security group, and we're just going to give it a name that distinguishes what it is. So we're going to call it Roos GDAP, and then we'll give it a description to let people know what it's for. And then we're going to say yes to Microsoft Entry Roles can be assigned to this group. And then we're going to add the Roost user that we recently created. So then we can see here, Roost Service Account. We'll select that, and then we'll hit Create. And then we'll get a pop-up stating that once you set the setting for the Microsoft Denture roles can be assigned, it's a setting that can't be changed later. Uh, we'll just hit yes on that. So now our user should be a member of that group, and then it should also be a member of the admin agents. So then the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go through and set MFA on the user. Now it's important to note that you can set the MFA through per user MFA, or you can do it through conditional access policies. In my scenario, my development tenant's not using conditional access policies, so we're gonna go ahead and set it through the per user MFA. So to do that, we'll just go into the admin center, go to active users, hit multi-factor authentication, and then once this loads, we'll find our Roost service account, select it, we'll hit enable to enable multi-factor authentication, and then we'll select it again and hit enforce. So now that user successfully is enrolled in multi-factor authentication. Now, once you actually go to sign into the user, you'll have to set up your multi-factor authentication. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to partner.microsoft.com and then we're just gonna sign in. And then once we're signed in, we'll just click on this partner center link, which will then redirect us to the partner center. So then from in here, we'll go to our customers. And in this case, I've already set up some relationships for the customer but I've terminated them. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna create a new relationship. Essentially what we'll do here is we'll go to admin relationships, we'll request a new relationship, and then we'll give it a name. So it's important to note that this name needs to be unique throughout your tenant. I wouldn't just call it something like GDAP. I would give it something like the customer's initials because I've already created one. I'm gonna give it two after that and then just call it GDAP. And then the maximum duration is 730 days. So then from there, we'll wanna select all the Microsoft Entra roles. Now it's important to note that you need to add the ones that are located in our document. The way you can find that is by going into the help site and typing in recommended GDAP, which will then bring up this article. So one piece of advice that I would give, these are not in alphabetical order, so the best thing to do is to do a control F, or if you're on Mac, command F, and then just search for them as they appear in the list. So application administrator, then user administrator, then Intune, and then exchange, and then we'll do security administrator then Cloud App Security Administrator, then Cloud Device Administrator, 
then Teams Administrator, then SharePoint Administrator, then Privileged Authentication Administrator, then Authentication Policy Administrator, and then Privileged Role Administrator. Then we'll go ahead and hit Save. Now, if everything was right, as of October 10th, there should be 12 roles assigned here. So then we'll go ahead and hit Finalize Request. And then once the request processes, we'll get this window. So this is the request form. Essentially, what you would do is send this to your customer via email. They would go through and they'd accept this invite via a global admin account. Since this is actually my tenant, I'm just going to log into that tenant real quick. Then you'll see here they'll get to review the roles and everything assigned to the relationship, how long it is, and then you agree to a terms of service, hit approve all, and now the relationship is active. So then we can go back into here, hit done, and then you'll see the relationship's active. So then once we're in here, we can review these one more time, and then we can go ahead and hit add security groups. We'll select that Roosh GDAP group that we created earlier, and then once we do that, we can select the roles. You can have more roles than what are mentioned in the document. If you do have more roles in your relationship, then you would only want to select the ones that apply to Roost. But in this scenario, since this relationship is only going to be used by Roost, I'm just selecting all the roles because they're all the ones that we need, and there we go. So then basically what we do at this point is we wait for the status to go active. It does not automatically refresh, so you just have to manually refresh it until it shows up as active. This can sometimes take a few minutes. All right, there we go. So our relationship is active. It's worth mentioning that it can take anywhere from three minutes up to 24 hours for this to actually take effect and be relevant. The next thing we're going to want to do is we'll want to log into Roost and then we'll want to set up the CSP and the graph integration. I already have the integrations added, but they're not authorized. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and authorize. Now I'll need to pause the video for a second so I can go through and set up the multi-factor authentication for my user. Uh, the way that you would do that prior to doing this is you would just go to office.com and sign in as that user you created and then just configure the multi-factor authentication. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording here and then we'll come back once I have that set up and we'll walk through authorizing. All right, now we're back. Now we'll want to authorize the integration and then we're just going to use another account and then we will copy that information over and then we've authorized. So now we'll want to do the same for the Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Exchange. So we'll just authorize, reach service account, go ahead and do the same thing but with the slider checked. Then we'll go back to integrations, do Microsoft Exchange Online, All right, and now basically all we'll do is we'll just go back to CSP, we'll click consent. If everything's set up correctly and we're not waiting on a Microsoft minute, then this should go through and give us a success message, which it did. So then we should be able to go into our workflows and we'll just do test graph and this is basically just a list users and then we're just running get mailbox to get a list of mailboxes so we'll first run this test on the main tenant just to make sure that the permissions are working for the MSP tenant there we go and then we'll do the same on Daniel Hayes tech and it looks like we're good there too. That's uh, basically the process for setting up the Roost user, then going through and setting up an admin relationship for the necessary roles in terms of Roost.